All right, good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing? Pretty good? Pretty excited? All right. How many of us? First time, NGConf? Whoa. Second time? And who are the people we're tired of? <laughs> so three times and above. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. OK, good morning. Uh, um, so uh, thanks for the introduction. Word, uh, I'm here to talk to you about crossing across platforms. That's the title of my talk. Now, of course, uh, I can see the faces, a lot of people are like, what the hell does that mean? So hopefully in the next 20 minutes-ish, I can you know, tell you what I hopefully mean by crossing across platforms. So uh, a bit about myself, um, I'm going to do this. Thanks to Wasim, by the way, for doing this. Uh, uh, my name is Sani Youssef. I, am for, I come from London, but I'm actually Nigerian, so, but I live in London and I've done for the past probably almost 10 years. Uh, but yeah, any Nigerians in the house? Uh, mm, mm, okay. Any people from England? Wow. Hey, you're right, mate. <laughs> All right. So I, I run a small company called Hybrid, uh, which is mostly just me, myself, and Hybrid, but it, it, it sounds fancier when you say it's a company. Uh, 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 I'm also a Google Developer Expert, which means I am lucky to get to travel around the world and get to educate people on a lot of stuff, mostly about Angular and the web and many more. Uh, so. This one is a make or break between my relationship between me and you guys, right? Uh, and everyone here. It's, I'm a huge fan of Avatar. Super big fan of Avatar. So has anyone not seen the movie? Okay, okay, okay. Security, <laughs> we know where they are. So I'm a huge fan. Like I, I love the movie, like literally, I, I started learning the language. Like I was at Disneyland Avatar, we had like a two hour queue. And I was educating everyone about the movie so, like, they even gave me a card, like, in case I, I, I'm looking for a job. But yeah, and I'm easy to find online. Um, I'm literally signing Yusuf everywhere. If you can find anyone that looks this ugly with that username that is not me, please let me know as quick as possible. Right? All right, are we ready? Shall we begin? Lift off? All right. So I'm going to paint a scenario to you, right? You know when your life is good, right? Everything is happening, you know, like, you know, you have a great job. You just nailed on this, you know, six, seven figure salary job. Like everything is good. You get to work remotely. You know, you have well-tested code as well. Like, you know, how many people have well-tested code? Don't lie. <laughs> good. All right. You know, you have well-tested code. CI, CD, you know, unit test, end-to-end -end test, integration test, black box test, white box test, everything, you know. And if you support football, like football. Foot, foot with the foot, <laughs> exactly. And if you follow football and your, your football team is finally winning, you know, Arsenal football team, greatest of all time, you know, finally winning again. So life is really going good, you know. And summer in England is actually great, which is like unheard of. Like, like we have a very weird relationship with the sun. <laughs> and like, it, yeah, it, it trolls us all the time. England is the only country where you come out, the sun is shining, but you still need a jacket. It's, it's really confusing, right? So normally when everything is going good in life, you know, it's like, you know, what could possibly go wrong? What could go wrong? Then this guy comes in. You know who this guy is? He's the client. This guy, he's the client. And this is the one guy that can fire everybody. Do you know how? By not paying you his money. <laughs> he can fire everybody. That's your business, gone. And you know, when the client comes, and clients always have this, you know, like your, your manager, you always feel like your manager's got your back, but the client comes and he's, he's like, nope, nope, I'm with the client here. So that he comes along and they always have very interesting requirements, you know, like I, I want my app to be able to work in the moon. Why? <laughs> because Elon Musk has done that as well, it's something like that. So what does your client want? You know, and clients are never shy of what they want, you know. So they want a mobile application and they also want a desktop application. By the way, if you hear me say, like desktop, it's, it's a Nigerian thing. Uh, I struggle to say desktop, so yeah, I'm meaning the same thing. Uh, so they want a mobile app and a desktop application, right? This is what the client wants. This is his demands, and he has money, and you have to figure it out. And your manager, normally your manager is supposed to have your back. Oh, we can't do this. Oh, you don't need that feature. No, <laughs> nobody says that to the client. So this is your manager. It's just basically do what the client says. And normally they say something like this. You have till the end of the month. I don't know if it's a, it's a universal manager thing. You have till the end of the month. But like, what is the 29th? <laughs> you know? So, and there's always never budget. 
there is never budget, you know? There's no budget for extra hands, you know, stuff like that. And your manager probably ends up with like, good luck, <laughs> right? Okay, so, this is you. This is you. Uh, Paul rolled you. What do you do? Because nothing is working at this point in time, right? You're late hours, you gotta, you gotta call the wife and, you know, or the husband, you know, it's, it's just not working. So, let's talk about what you already have as a solution. What do you actually already have? You have a web application built probably on a, a, a server technology. So most likely, you know, something built with like .NET, you know, or Java or PHP, you know, something like that. Like you already have a standard web application, right? You, this has been tested and tried. Uh, it's been working for years, you know. Everybody's scared to change that particular line because the guy that wrote it is already dead, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> exactly. And the last guy that tried, you know, it didn't quite work. There was one time I used to maintain this code base where there was a counter of the amount of time people have tried to refactor the code. <laughs> and it was like around 134. So you try to refactor it, and if you fail, then you increase the counter for the next person. <laughs> so it was like a warning. Uh, so this is normally the first attempt you, 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 you take to, to solve that problem. Your client, remember, needs a mobile app and a desktop application now to go hand in hand with this, right? So you'd probably be like, okay, you know, you do your little reading, you go and stack overflow, steal some code, do you know? We all do it, you know? And so you probably create a separate project for your mobile application. So you probably create like a, a native application, right? And you also create a separate repository for your desktop application because you need to support Windows and Mac and Linux and things like that. So this is probably your first attempt. Makes sense, everything, right? But, and you, you probably think life's all good, right? No. This is the things that you probably didn't consider. The first one is, you know, how do you share code across all these platforms? Right, you totally forgot about that one. The second one is, you know what? We have some people that use Android phones, and we have some people that use a specific device where every year they remove a feature, but people still queue up to buy it, <laughs> right? They start off by making the thing smaller, and then they remove the, the home button. Oh, there's no buttons now, right? Next year, they'll probably remove the screen. <laughs> Alexa iPhone, but guess what? For some reason, people will queue for three days and buy it. I don't know why, right? So, and you also forget that Android and iOS have different set of tools. You're writing different, completely different languages. You know, Java or Kotlin, if you're fancy. Objective-C, the most beautiful language ever made, or Swift, you know? Uh, and you probably need more hands because you cannot do this. You're used to writing server technology. So these are, these are the things you normally don't consider. And it's not because you're not a great developer, it's just, it's a blind spot. Right? Until you get into this, you create this application, you're like, oh, damn it, oh, bloody hell. I actually need to think, the, think about this again. So, and this is you at that time. <laughs> like, well, you need this job. You, re you really need this job. You just had a baby, you know, you know, you're paying off your student loan. You really need this job. So how do you solve? You probably go to the boss, we need some hands, and they're like, no, uh, we don't have any budget. So let's see how we can solve your problem, right? Let's see how we can solve that problem. The things you want in theory, because the greatest way to solve a problem is like envision what you actually want, which is very hard. Like if you ask yourself, what do I want? That's a very hard thing. Like, you know, so you want the ability to use the same technology across all platforms. That would be nice. That would be nice. I can work with the same technology across all these platforms. That way I don't have to retrain, or if I'm hiring, I just hire people and they can just hit the ground running, right? You, you want to be able to write the same programming language. You know, I don't want a case where I'm writing Kotlin here today, Java here. If, you, if, you, if anyone here has maintained code bases that requires you to write different programming languages, you probably know what I'm talking about. That stuff is not healthy, right? Like, I've seen people quit and like go do music or something because it just, it never works out. Uh, you share code bases easily, that's what you want. You want to be able to use a feature here on this application and use the same feature somewhere else, right? And you want to use the same build processes, right? We, we've seen how everybody's been talking about Bazel in, in this particular conference because it's just much easier. We've, we've seen about the monorepo way away. It's just much easier to centralize stuff. You know, our natural instinct is to like separate stuff. It's pretty cool until we get hurt and then realize it's a bad idea, right? So let's make a case for Angular, right? Let's make a case for Angular. Uh, why Angular first? Why will we make a case for Angular, right? That's the question that, because 
we, you don't want to assume a technology before you actually solve a problem. You want to see why. Does it fit my needs and all of that? So let's see. These are the reasons why you'd probably want to um, use Angular first, the, the rich API of Angular, right? The first one we're going to talk about is reactive forms. Has anyone used re reactive forms here? OK. Anyone still using template forms? Oh, no word. <laughs> No, say no to template forms, trust me. Every time you use the template form, an innocent kitten somewhere dies or something like that. It's bad, bad, bad for business. Just don't, right? So you use reactive forms, which allows you to build really complex forms. Because guess what? Most applications we build are actually just data input, data out. Majority of apps you use, that's literally what they do, right? WhatsApp is, a, I think it was bought for $30 billion. It's a glorified list. It's a list of people you don't care about, and you message them once in a while, and that's it. Gmail, you use it every day. It's a glorified list. It's things you don't want to answer, and that's it, everything. Facebook is a glorified list. I mean, there is like, you know, yeah, there might be a Cambridge Analytica thing going on behind the scenes, but at its core, it's a glorified list. So you have things like HDB client, which allow you to do really robust REST calls, you know, CRUD operations, uh, interceptors, a lot of things. For, for enterprise, this is very, very important, right? Uh, and you have like really, really robust routing. If you worked in AngularJS and you know how crap that router was, no disrespect to whoever created it, but, you know, Victor did a wonderful job with the router in, in, in Angular because it really, I think we realized that a lot of people wanted to do more stuff. So we needed more. Uh, and localization and interna internationalization. You know, we forget that like a billion people actually read from right to left. Like we actually all as human beings started reading from right to left until, you know, ink. And then it just didn't make sense because then you swipe the ink and when you come back and right. But the cavemen were like, kink, 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 kink. So it was like right to left. Anyways, another day. And localization. Uh, and also uh, components. You want to be able to build Little, little chunks that you can just throw around everywhere. And that's just like, that's what we want. We, you want to have componentized things, right? Um, so other features that maybe we don't even talk about, about Angular, because there's a ton of them, is very enterprise friendly, right? Uh, Server-side rendering with universal. So if SEO is really critical for you, or you know, mobile first paint is really critical, this is pretty cool. Uh, the last one is actually the one I really like, Super Community. There's 1,500 of us here in the city of Salt Lake City, all because we care about one specific technology. You know? So this is really, really cool. And I was having a chat with uh, Mishko. I was like, you made this possible. I know we've all done, but look, look, look at what this is. This is what you've made possible. You know? uh, so this is a hypothetical use case for our billion dollar company. Does it make sense? Right? We want to have mobile, iOS, Android, Windows. If you still use a Windows phone, you know, uh, get a new phone. Uh, but web, mobile web, desktop, PWA, and these guys, right? We want to have something like this. Pretty cool. Billion dollar application, which we can then go to San Francisco and raise crazy amount of money and then exit, even though it doesn't do anything, you know? Make sense? All right. All right. So the web solution, you'd have something like this where you have your app, you know, use Angular. And you'd write some JavaScript with it, right? And you'd also write a superset, which is TypeScript, of course. Uh, and you'd probably use the SPA route, which is the traditional Angular route, or you go to Universal if you really need to do server-side technology, right? And server-rendered um, application. Now, we have another one for the mobile as well. You write your mobile code, you know, you use, you use Angular, um, um, write JavaScript with um, TypeScript. And you'd probably want to go with something like Ionic, because if you, you really want to stick to the web, focus stuff. But if you really need native, natively rendered stuff, native script is another really great uh, uh, alternative that you can really hook in. That way, you still get to use Angular across all your applications, right? And then for the desktop solution, you probably have something like that with Electron, very similar, right? But at the core, you're, you're still writing pretty much the same code you know, using Angular, using TypeScript, using JavaScript, all of that, right? And, you know, you'll be able to support my, uh, OS X and Windows and Linux, right? Now, we've envisioned the solution, but how do we make it actually practically work? That's the most important thing. So how do you actually share code on that level? Um, and so the CLI to the rescue. That's the most important thing. 
you can do ng generate an application. So this is a new thing. And now you can even go on steroids with schematics, uh, with NX, sorry. Uh, you can even like have workspaces with NX. Uh, I'm a bit more vanilla, so I, I still like to use just the traditional thing. But what it does allow you to be the CLI is to generate these other applications. So you can generate another app in the same repo, using the same response um, um, package that JSON. And now you have integrations for native script. You have integration for Ionic as well. So you can just add an ng, add an Ionic application. But this is also another thing, ng generate library. And I've given Mike a hard time over the past years to make this happen, and he finally did. Which allows you to create a library, right? A shared set of components that you can use, a shared set of um, um, authentication files that you can use, things that, you, that can be shared, that you can just require those as modules in these other mini applications, right? So you end up with something that looks very similar to this, where you have your web application in the same repo, your mobile application with Ionic or a native script, and you have the desktop electron application. And then you have that shared library, and then you can do things like that. And you know, mono repo is very, very great, shared library. And then you can use, you know, uh, import it, you can share the code as uh, ng modules. I actually have gone further to use component inheritance to take pretty much this on steroids. So what you can have is you can have what I call shadow components. These are components that just have specific like detail and then you can inherit them and then extend them. And we'll talk about that shortly as well, right? So Sunny, wait, I have a weird scenario because you know clients, right? And this is actually based on a true life experience that I had to solve. Uh, like, that's, this was a point in my career, I was very honest with myself. If we don't solve this problem, this could make or break me, because I'm not sure I will mentally be able to recover from that, from that last. So we had a client that legit did that, and we said, um, you know, you have these three applications, um, but, you know, you have some shared modules and components, right? But the components have some shared logic, so they behave the same way across. But they also have platform-independent behavior. Because for the mobile, the clients want something to look pink, while on the web, he wants it to look blue. Why? Because he's the client and he's got the money. You just have to do what he says or else you get fired. Uh, what do you do, right? And this is, uh, the case for this is white labeling. Now you have a solution. You have tons of clients you're dealing with, but you want that one client that wants an added feature. If you add it to the core, then it could break everything for everybody else. So how do you add a specific feature for this one person that it doesn't break everybody else's code? And that's very, very important. So normally this would be like the very, uh, the visualized way to solve this problem. You know, you'd have like a div, if it's mobile, then render it this way. If it's web, this is like your component, right? We all do this, nah, it's, it's okay. I'm not gonna tell anybody. But you know, if it's, if it's web, like use this piece of code. If it's mobile, do this. But you know what this is called? You end up with something where we call a God component. It's a component that's trying to do anything. And there's an actually, legit, like, actually there's a legit code smell. The code smell, I kid you not, is called inappropriate intimacy. That is, you can check this out on the refactoring book. The re, this is what inappropriate, uh, inappropriate intimacy looks like. Because it's like, why is desktop, mobile, and web living in the same place? They're, they're, they're speaking to each other, but they shouldn't. And that's the name of the code, code, uh, code smell. That's a code smell. Like, so you're going to get hurt at some point if you continue doing this, right? So how do you solve this problem, uh, right? So you use component inheritance to actually solve this problem. So you'd go, you create a sh what I call a shadow code or base component, right, uh, in that shared code library. And you'd have something like that. And you'd implement some shared function, right? And you don't give it a template because the templates are never inherited. In, it's just the, even the selectors, anything in the decorator is not inherited, just the class, right? And you can also inherit inputs and outputs. And you can override. You have the same object-oriented behavior. And then what you would do is you then create the same component, but maybe with something like mobile. So like my live component, and then we create my mobile live component. So you create another component. But all this component is doing is inheriting from that base component, but then you can put the mobile specific, specific, specific features there, the mobile specific inputs there, right? So that way, when you change this particular piece of functionality, everybody else doesn't get affected, right? But also, if you extend a specific feature that is shared across, everybody else just gets that feature. We all go home happy. And if you have a client that wants even it's very client-specific feature for the mobile, then you can further extend and create a client-specific component that inherits from the client, uh, mobile component, and then you can write client-specific code there, and everybody goes home happy. 
That way you, you leave everybody in their rooms. Pretty cool stuff. So problem solved, right? We believe, do, you, do you agree we've solved the problem? Maybe, maybe not. But what about white labeling? This is the case, right? And you know, you have a core app, client A, client B, client C, like that. How do you, you know, you have a skeleton core app application and the core app itself is only an abstract, so like a shell type of view where based on the client's JSON or XML, if you really want to kill yourself, you know, um, uh, then you have some logic to uh, say it's, you want to like sell the same thing to different customers, things like that. Some customers want specific different things. So you can use something that, um, that looks like this. You can configure what I call configurable modules. So pretty similar to what Angular actually does or any other third party module we use, Firebase, where you configure from the outside. So in our case, for example, we had multiple clients, but each client was almost a separate uh, application on the server side, they have their own um, you know, um, authentication rules and all of that, right? So we had to have something, services that were not specific to just a client, but were almost morphed based on the client. And you use something like that. So you use injection tokens, right? And this ensures that each white label app polices its own configuration. So you configure from the outside, and then it just morphs at runtime, right? And you can use component inheritance still on this level, even though it's a bit dangerous. So this is something you'd have that looks like this, where you'd configure this, and now basically that configuration comes from the outside, and then you use the for root, for child type of way, very similar for consistency. Uh, you create a static function. And the injection token is what you configure from the outside. So set very similar to what you do with Firebase. When you want to use Firebase on an app, you provide like a, a, um, an object that has all your key value pairs, but you can use it for multiple applications, right? And this is what you would have. So for a specific application, you just configure from the, from the forward, from the outside. That way now you have this module that works. And you can create services also that are very, that, um, that use the same injection token and do the same thing, right? And that's it, we've literally, in the end, I will say something, let your requirements speak. I can come here and tell you, this is how you solve this case or that case or that case, but please, oh please, your requirements should always dictate which path you take. You know, this might not be the case for you, but it covers a lot of cases. So always be loyal to your requirements. That's the most important thing. Because if you get the requirements wrong, then you're really in big trouble with everybody. Both the client, both the boss, and definitely someone's getting fired. Uh, but yeah. So uh, at this point, I will say thank you very, very much, and I'll welcome any questions. Thank you very much. Yeah.